In a galaxy far, far away, and 15 years ago, when I was getting my MBA at the University of Illinois in Champaign, it was important to have cars or at least access to nice friends with cars because you need them for grocery shopping, especially in howling snowstorm coming from the Great Lakes area. My ex's sister offered to give me her old car. It was a 1996 Saturn SC2 two-door white coupe. It was very nice of her, but I refused because I didn't want the trouble of having to learn how to drive a manual car. This is how my ex convinced me. Why would you say no to a free car? You should learn how to drive a manual car. What if some murderer is chasing you and all you have is the manual car to flee the scene? All right, all right. So I agreed to learn, and he agreed to teach. He had a great deal of patience. He was even risking his life because once I ran a stop sign, and the Saturn got T-boned on the passenger side where my ex was sitting. We survived, and I even drove the darn car across the country from Chicago to LA by myself on the iconic Route 66. That was 15 years ago, and there was no sign of self-driving cars, so I had to learn how to drive a manual. And in order to navigate, I had to print out directions on a paper from MapQuest. Remember MapQuest before Google Maps? Millennials and Gen Zs are like, huh? After seeing SpaceX Falcon 9 thrusting through the sky, kicking off the first ever commercial flight available for space travels, and maybe watching too much The Mandalorian, I would like to suggest that time has come for us to learn how to fly spaceships. Some scientists argue that the mammals, especially the human species, got a chance to become dominant on planet Earth because the asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. Guess what? In 48 years, in 2068 to be exact, asteroid Apophis may hit Earth. It's not fake news. Look it up. So knowing how to fly spaceships may become a useful skill in 2068. Who do you think they will bring on board when humans try to escape the disaster? Sure, rich people who can afford the trip, but if you're not one of the rich, do you think they will bring on board people who cannot fly a spaceship or people who can fly? No, we don't all need to become pilots or astronauts or Anakin Skywalker. And flying a spaceship is just a figurative speech. But the point is, we went from having no sign of self-driving cars, so I had to learn how to drive a manual, to having a working commercial flight for space travels in merely 15 years. With this speed, I believe and hope we'd figure something out by 2068. But the good old days of studying about one field, working on the same job forever, expecting recognition, steady paychecks, and security from the companies you work for are gone. The other point is, jobs of tomorrow may not exist today yet. When I was studying marketing in business school, jobs such as social media manager didn't exist. Now imagine how useful it would be to be able to fly a spaceship in 15, 20, 30 years. No futurists can tell us for sure what the future will be like. The only way to have a chance for survival or for your kids to survive is keeping our minds open to learn new skills and new knowledge, even those things that may seem impractical at first. Not everyone needs to become an AI researcher or software engineer. We also need people who knows how to fly spaceships, grow potatoes on Mars, or just explorers who would be willing to be the first to step off the spaceships to see if human species can live there, wherever that is. We certainly need inspirational leaders too. By the way, the University of Illinois MBA program does not exist anymore. I suspect many more programs and schools will be gone soon too. So get on with the spaceship flying simulation now.